Hello and welcome to a new PASCOM training video uh, session. Today we're focusing on a sort of what's new and it's basically all around what's new with the PASCOM 19 uh, desktop client and mobile clients. Now we've changed a few bits and pieces so it could be a little bit different from what you're used to and we're going to spring right in with a new layout which is designed to like promote your user experience and usability and so on. So Matthias, take us in, what has changed? What you can see here clearly now, uh, the pictures are different than before. Good, that was it, thanks. That's it, uh, no. Um, What's the main difference is that we have now our own state where you can see if somebody is on the PC or on the mobile. Mm -hmm. And you can see here it's a green because Megan is on her desktop. And now you can see here he's on his mobile and it changes to green. So he's using the mobile or he's standby. And you can now clearly distinguish between the states and the states cannot be changed by the user, those states. So it's, it's the machine state as opposed to the user state? Yes. Right, okay. Still we have the user state, the user's opinion. Yep. Um, you can say, I am in a meeting, then you get this red flag. And here also, one of my colleagues, he is on the PC, but he does not want to be disturbed. Okay. So. That's easy, mm -hmm. and this state now is permanent. So you say, I'm away, and then you are away. It does not matter when you start your desktop client again or your mobile client again. So you it's, still it's, it's global, no matter which yes. app I'm using. I could log yes. out of my desktop app and log into my mobile app, yes. and then I'm still at that state. So that's the, the, the main change regarding states. Okay, fair enough. Then uh, we have another change. This is mm -hmm. we have one long list now with all my contacts in there. Still, we have the favorites, so I can say this is my favorite, this is my favorite, and so on and so forth, and I can collect stuff. But now somebody could say, what should I do with 100 users, 500 users, what is users. With, with this big list? Yeah, um, so what have we done on that front? I mean, we've got some sort of smart filters that we've implemented and so on. How does that help people? Yes, we can do it like the following. So first, we implemented sort by recent. What does this mean? Please send me a chat message, James. Then um, if I get a message, the user which, with the message will bubble up. So I can see clearly now this is the last contact. It does this for all my favorites and it does this for all the other users. So at the end of the day, everybody who I have in contact or I'm working with mm -hmm. is on the top of the list. Right, okay, so uh, particularly with the most recent, eventually over time, yep. all the people that you contact most frequently will end up naturally at the top of the list anyway. Yes, yeah. but some people say, I don't want that. I want the old sort by extension or sort, sort by the alphabet. If you're so, old school. Yeah, maybe not old school, maybe you just like it. Okay, fair enough. You yep. just like it. Yeah. So what can happen then? The list is still long and maybe somewhere here down under somebody sends you a message and you cannot see who. So the feature is you can just click here and then you get the filter and it filters for you all the 100 messages okay. and you can then work and answer all your messages. And there are also smart filters so you can say I want just to see online users, I want to see this and that and then you can reduce the list and for sure also if you have uh, let's say sorted by extension, you can still use your favorites. Okay. So you should be able also to handle huge lists. Mm -hmm. And if it's too complex, if it's really 500 users and the users from the building A has nothing to do with uh, users from a building B, you can mm -hmm. still use our roles. I was going to say you yeah. could define a role for the building or the, the department or whatever, and then you can just make sure that only people at that role mm -hmm. can see each other. But the administrator, we are talking about an administrator yeah. feature mm -hmm. here and not about the user feature then. Okay, good. So that's basically it with the smart filter to help you with your contacts uh, for internal uh, and so on and so on. Um, the next thing we need to look at is uh, what we've done for um, how we can introduce a intelligent search, so to speak. Yes. Um, search is very present in the new clients. Yes, we can, we can directly dive into it. Mm -hmm. So here is the search. I can search for, let's say, just a part of the word like this and then you can see I can clearly find now this entry. So things like that and I can search everything and it's fast and I can access everything and here it's present here in the main bar so I can mm -hmm. find it. Why is it so fast? 
because we are using our local caches and um, over the next few months we want to have a complete offline uh, capability in our client. Okay, so basically all the information is there local so you can get to it really quickly and yes. uh, you don't have to wait around and so yes. on. Another cool example is if you want to do a transfer of a mm -hmm. call, it was not so easy in the past. You had to jump around and then go back to the list and see uh, where you want to transfer. Particularly your if you're a mobile user. Yes. On the big screen, it was no problem because mm. here you had your users and the other side you had your soft phone, but on the mobile, right. it was hard to be the switchboard. Should we have a look at it then? Yes. See what it's like now? Sure. Okay. So, as uh, we said, I switched to the mobile view. All right, and I'm going to give you a quick call. I answer the call, for sure. for sure. Now I get a new kind of object which I can interact with. So I can open this, I can chat with her, I can transfer the call, I can do whatever. But if I now add a new call, in the past I had to know the number or I had to go back to the contact list or the phone book and search something. So now I can just enter G and then this is the colleague I want to transfer the call to or to open a new call. And then I just click here um, and I don't have to jump around. He can answer the call. And now I have two objects clearly distinguished from each other. So this is the one on hold, this is the one I'm talking to. And now I can say I want to transfer this to Megan. Right. And that's it. Now he's with me. Yes, that's fast. Mm -hmm. And so you can be the switchboard on your mobile if you would like to. Yeah, that's pretty cool actually. I mean, I really like that. And another cool function that we've introduced is got to do with this, but um, it was ringing on my watch. Yeah. Just got, thought I'd get that in there. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, the next thing we're going to look at is, uh, for example, uh, favorites and so on. Um, we've gone through the internal contacts. We've gone through searching. And the next logical step is obviously then the phone book. Yes. Um, and it's been a much requested feature, I believe. Yes. It's a small feature, but it was much requested. Let's so have we a look did at it. it. Uh, you go to the phone book. This is your local pizza guy. You call him every day. Yeah, I call him three times. You maybe once. Yes. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So, I can now put them into my favorite list. Um, if I click onto the object, it opens the phone book entry. If I click on this button, it will directly dial the first available number, so the main number. Yeah. The so if he's got multiple numbers behind him, mm -hmm. it goes through the list in that order. So when you click yes. on there, it's always number one. Yes. Okay, good. Now the next big thing uh, that is coming out with Passcom 19 is uh, groups or team messaging. Now, many of you will be used to, for example, our old on the fly uh, mm -hmm. group chats. And um, what we've introduced with 19 is a uh, always on permanent chat room for yes. groups. And what we could do is dynamically set up a team, which or a chat group, which I think you're gonna do now mm -hmm. and show you how it works and why it's important because it's the building blocks for many other cool yes, stuff. Yes, we can upgrade it. Then. We can upgrade it. We, we, Good, we, we, we see. take it away. So first I make a new group. I name it marketing. I can generate the picture or I can choose one from my uh, downloads. That's one you prepared earlier. Yes. Nice marketing. And then I can add some users because being alone is very sad. Like this, I can exchange the filter. I can do it very quickly or even in very huge lists and I can save them. What happens now is I see I have three users in my group or members in my group. I can revisit, I can add participants, I can leave the group, I can kick somebody out of my group I don't like in the group. <laughs> so um, basically it's a chat, basically. So it works on mobile everywhere. You can also manage your group on mm -hmm. mobile and What's a good feature? You can also mute groups. You can say, yeah, I don't the, the, want to get push messages. Uh, yeah, the, there's, I've got a blog out there somewhere about um, abusing unified communications. Um, use this properly. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, uh, otherwise people will get annoying. And if there is a lot going on in that chat room that is not necessarily relevant to you particularly, but to other people, of course, just mute it and then unmute it later on when you need to. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool little uh, well thought through tool there. Um, now, the reason that I mentioned that it's the building block for many cool new things that are coming with 19, um, it's not just team messaging. It's also audio conferencing. It's also uh, uh, video calling and screen sharing. Yeah. So we can build from this our entire conferencing suite. Yes. So sounds complicated, but it's very easy. So this is the marketing group. I can just call it. And then I'm inside of the marketing group. I'm here, um, 
Now James can also enter, another colleague enter. So now I can have the audio conference and I can clearly see who is in the conference. Even if it's a longer list, I can start to scroll so I can really have big conferences here. Here on the other side, I see that there is an action in this group. Also, if I'm not part of the call, I see that this is something going on in the group and I can participate if I that, want. That's very good actually, just to be able to know what's happening yeah. or something's happening. So that's just voice. Now yeah. I can upgrade it to a video. I just click on video. This is my cam, which is uh, pointing to the studio. Now my colleagues can enable also their cams. Here is James, um, here is Gilbert, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he is on the mobile phone. So even from the mobile it works, you can see that it's a little bit uh, different uh, from the angles and everything, but it's yeah. on the mobile. And now you can upgrade this to screen sharing. Maybe you want to show something. Yeah, I'm going to show us uh, one of our new uh, flyers that are coming with 19. There it is, the de yeah. for desktop and mobile, you see. That's it. And yeah. then I don't want to see this marketing stuff in the hang up. Fair enough. So that's it. Yeah. And the group is downgraded to where it came from to a chat. Yeah, and the good thing is that you can still see, for example, if you end that call uh, yourself, and uh, Matthias has ended his, but Gilbert out there is still on, we can <laughs> see it, that it's green, and we can turn you know, and say, hey, get out. Get uh, out, or, or throw him out of the <laughs> Or whatever it want to be. Um, but look, that's really cool, actually, because basically, unlike other vendors, you don't need any third-party software. It's everything here, click of the mouse, done mm -hmm. straight away, nice and easy. And on every platform yeah. you support. And no extra cost. That's also true. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. But that's it. That's it for Pascal uh, 19, what's new. Thanks very much for watching. Until next time. See goodbye. You.